Hello, Southwestern readers. It's the time of year you've been waiting for. It's time to kick off our One District, One Book. What will we read this year? Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Nice day. Not bad at all. Did you hear? I certainly did. How about you? Did you hear? You bet I did. Did you believe it? Not at first. I thought they were kidding. So did I. But it's true. It certainly is. The second sun up. Shh. Maybe these kids haven't heard about him. Perhaps you're right. Maybe we should tell them. I agree. Go right ahead. You tell them. You can tell them. Why don't you tell them? I've got an idea. Why don't we take these kids back to the time we knew him to tell them what we know about his story? Good, Good idea. idea! Dr. Carey, you go first. Tell us what you think of him. Well, the first time I met him, I was sailing my boat, and upon the boat's return, he ran over and asked me for a job sailing my boat. I was pretty surprised, but soon learned how much he knew about sailing, so I set him up with a challenge. I told him I'd let him sail the wasp across the pond and back in a race, and if he could beat that boat, the detestable Lillian B. Womrath, I would give him a regular job on my boat. He was overjoyed at the challenge and jumped right aboard. I could tell he had never been happier. Sailing was a sport for him for sure. Before we knew it, the waters turned rough and there was a terrible collision. I almost thought he might not make it back, but with his confidence and quick thinking, he succeeded. I was never so relieved and thankful. I told him he could command my boat any time. He sure was a confident and quick thinking little fella. What a story for sure. How about you, Superintendent? Well, I would certainly agree that he is one confident young man, but he is also very well spoken and considerate too. I was in a difficult situation and went for a walk to think about my options. Well, I sat down along the curb and just when I was feeling most desperate, along he came in his sporty little car. He saw me looking very concerned and pulled up alongside and asked me if he could help in any way. I told him I was the superintendent of schools in the town and one of my teachers was sick and I needed a substitute to take her place, but there was nobody in town who knew enough to do the job. No spare teachers, no anything, and school was to start in an hour. Well, he offered right then and there to take over the class for a day. He had a very interesting day with those students. Those children never had such an engaging day in school. What a smart young scholar he was. How kind of him to pitch in and help in a desperate situation. Wow! Storekeeper, what can you add about his character? Well, not only is he confident and intelligent, but he is also very charming, which is why I really wanted him to meet another young friend in town named Harriet. I met him while I was taking a break from the store work. I was sitting out front of the store when he walked up and asked about an ice cold soda. I told him we have lots of choices. While we were chatting, I told him about Harriet, how she was young and pretty and came from a very important family in town. I thought she would love to meet him because they had so many unusual traits in common. He told me he was just passing through town and was too much on the go to take time out to meet a young lady from an important family. Word has it though, that he kept thinking about our conversation and I believe they may have met up despite his desire to keep moving through town. He was so easy to talk to. What a charming young soul. Hmm, I wonder if they ever met. What an interesting pair they would have made. Ma'am, you are perhaps closest with him. What can you tell us about him and his remarkable life? That is true. I've known him since the day he was born. I agree that he is charming, confident, and intelligent. He was walking just about from the time he was born, and he was a talker very early. He was also very useful and helpful around the house. Because he was kind of small, he could reach into the tightest spaces. 
He helped us out with some problems with our sink and our piano and our ping pong games. Anyway, he was also very loyal, especially to his friends. He had a very special friend named Margolo that came to live with us too. Both of them were kind of sick at the time, and so they kept each other company and became good friends. She even saved his life one day when he had an accident that landed him on the Atlantic Ocean. What great friends, so loyal to each other. Then one day, she just left. He was so saddened that he packed up and left after her. That was the last I saw of him. He was like a son to me. It must be wonderful to have a friend like that, someone that will stop at nothing to make sure you are safe and loved. Mr. Repairman, why don't you, or why you may have been the last person to have seen him? What can you add to the story? He was one incredible fellow, loyal, confident, intelligent, and charming. He was also quite adventurous and determined, which is how I happened to meet him. I was out repairing some phone lines when this sporty little car pulled up. The road came to a split and he was trying to decide which road to take. He saw me and struck up a conversation about the beauty of the day and he made some inquiries as to whether I had seen someone that matched the description of his lovely Margolo. I told him I had not, but that I would be on the lookout for her. When we then discussed how lovely it would be to continue north and which road would take him there. I told him of all the wonderful things I'd seen in the world, but especially to the north. He decided that he would go north and, and he left. I could tell that he was determined that north was the right direction for him. I hope he found all the adventure he wanted and his lovely Margolo too. Well, you can see we are talking about one incredible youngster, kind of like yourselves. I only wish we could have talked to him directly. His story is so unusual, yet interesting. What a story he has. In fact, you could read it. That's right. I will see that each of your families get a copy of the book. We can all read about him. You will enjoy his adventures for sure. The adventures we are talking about belong to the one, the only, Stuart Little. This year's One District, One Book is Stuart Little by E.B. White. Surely you will enjoy the story of a little mouse who, despite his tiny size, has some large adventures.